So here we are at Sharp Abbey, guys. Best part of a thousand years old. But it's not a site of antiquity from my perspective. You know, but we've come down to, to the Abbey today because it's about half a mile from the old Sharp Avenue, the old centre of this um, this sacred monument of Sharp. You know, and it's written in the old chronicles for the Abbey guys that it was built from the old monument stones. Isn't that right, Mess? Yeah. So we just wanted to come and have a look at that and put that narrative out there, you know. If the uh, if the Sharp Avenue was a mile long, it was a double stone row, and each stone was 15 foot around, it's a lot of stonework. You know, and all these dry stone walls, the Abbey, and possibly a lot of farmhouses around here, were all done with the old monument stones. They cared less for all that sort of stuff back in the day. But we're going to tie this video up today, guys, with a real close look at um, what's left of Sharp Avenue. Parish of Sharp. Orswater. Sharp Abbey. Wetsleydale. Swindale. Market Cross. St Michael's Church. Ardingdale. Keld Chapel and the Goggle Stone, and that's what we're going to go and look for today. Up here we've got Kempo. That was a massive stone circle that was partially destroyed when they built the railway and the A6. So we're going to search this area now and see what, what stones we can find. So this is the world famous Kempo Stone Circle, Granite Stone Circle, or what's left of it. But what a shame. What a shame, man. So the avenue would have run from here right through to the hills over there. See, it's sandwiched between the old A6 and the railway embankment. Well, that would have been part of the avenue for sure. Perhaps. Yes, mate. The ship is open 12 to 1.30 actually. Okay. So I've been looking all over the internet for evidence of this stone row. And there's, uh, there were a lot of sketches done in the 1700s. I think it was about 1765, something like that. And these were eyewitness accounts. And the stones measured 15 foot in circumference and they were about two meters high. Big, big stones, hundreds of them. Two rows from Kempo over to Skillow Hill over here. Translated, the Hill of Skulls. But here, we've got the giant's foot. And that's a massive piece of stone, man. And Mason's legs are aching today. He's had a long week. <laughs> That's the way, mate. 
we're going to flex in and the people that laid these stones out laid them out in purpose they did it for a reason the colours meant something to them the crystals meant something to them of course all a massive mystery to these modern minds of ours we just look at it and have massive question marks but there's an intuitive thing for me you know what I mean I look at this landscape and it kind of awakens a curiosity that I just love so when you look at this and the giant's foot over there with Mason still on the top and I have no doubt that these were connected but look what I've just spotted here big piece of red sandstone clearly an old gate post of some sort look at that glistening in the sunshine but when you think of the changes to this landscape only over the last two three hundred years it's incredible to think that only three hundred years ago this stone avenue was still complete you know the A6 in its infancy would have been there and that would have been the first thing to carve through it all and then the railway and eventually the motorway and it's, it's virtually destroyed it all and the village finished it off really Shap is a linear village and that's an interesting marking on this stone here I'm not saying it's a cut mark or a concentric swirl because I ain't no expert I ain't no historian and I ain't no expert and I don't want to be guys I want to come at this from a intuitive level not an intellectual level and this is why I've got Mason with me this week because the truth that children speak is incredible and I wanted that perspective so here we are the Goggleby stone and just over here you can see the Aspers field stone and this would have been towards the end of the avenue But he's a belter, isn't he? Look at that. That's huge. And we went to go check out that huge stone circle. Yeah. Is it bigger than this one, do you think? Well, this one is a stone wall. And again, this is said to have cut marks in it. Don't really know what I'm looking for though. Oh, there you go, see. These are the same kind of markings as we've got on Goggleby Stone. Fascinating. And when you look at the landscape up here on these fells you've got a couple more stone circles over here on the eye fells is where we were on day one overlooking all this and the alignment to these stones is, is what's blown me away this week you know I've never really looked at alignments in the landscape I've always been guilty of just coming to look at the monuments instead of looking at the landscape that they're placed in you know when you look at the landscape rather than the monuments you see reasoning behind it you know they're energy lines you know they're harnessing energy Stick to the middle of the field, you'll be right. What? Stick to the middle of the field, you'll be right. So the write-up of this monument back in the 1700s 
you know, from the eyewitnesses that first came across this, this stone avenue of Sharp, likened it to Callanesh up in Scotland. And that is a bold statement. If anybody knows anything about antiquity, Callanesh is probably, well, it's up there as probably one of the best. One of the best British sites, anyway, certainly one of Scotland's best. So right through there, Colpit Hill. You can see the uh, the railway works there with the steam coming up. We could see that from Colpit Hill on the other side. Sharp, we've got Goggleby Stone down there, Aspersfield Stone. And down here, lots of stuff. And that there is the famous Hill of Skulls Bull Barra. Over here at this farm, we've got the Thunderstorm. It's actually marked on the OS map as the Thunderstorm. And we do have another one round here. And over the hills there, it drops down and back up onto Ascombe Fells. A perfect alignment. And beyond to Great Mel and Little Mel. So we're going to take this exploration even further, aren't we, Mace? But that'll be, but that'll be on another video at another time. So for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the Sharp Avenue from Little Mace. I'll be on more videos, don't worry. <laughs> and we'll see you again soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See ya. So we're going to do it again sometime, yeah? Get into the lakes on the next one, mate. Yeah. I'll take some other stone circles further. Come on. <laughs>